Now, one thing I like about the Gideons, in every one of the Bibles they give away, they have a couple of pages at the end that tell you what you need to do once you become convinced this book is the message of God himself. And uh, I read those two pages, and it starts off by saying that you, the reader, are not perfect, but God demands perfection, and the proof of that is your conscience. And, you know, when I began to read this book at age 17, what I realized is there was a moral message here, and the moral excellence described in this book was far superior to what I found in any other holy book. Every holy book has got a moral message, but this was far beyond uh, the messages I saw in the other books. And at age 17, I said, I want to live up to that moral standard. It's such a beautiful standard. And I did everything I could to live up to that standard. But the harder I tried, the more miserable I felt. And now the Gideons were explaining to me why I felt so miserable. I said, that's God's tool to convince us that God's standard of moral performance is one of perfection. And we don't have it. The harder you try, the more our conscience reacts to convince us we fall short of God's standard. But then the second thing the Gideons talk about is how the creator of the universe came to planet Earth and lived as a man and lived a life of moral perfection and then died on a cross in order that he could trade his moral perfection for our moral imperfection. And when I read that, my mind harkened back to a few chapters in the book of John where Jesus of Nazareth stood in front of an audience as large as this and declared to the audience that he was morally perfect. In the front row was his mother, his four brothers, and his sisters, and they all agreed he was morally perfect. I said, that's proof enough for me. You're not going <laughs> to fool your mother. There's no way I could say that to my mother or my sisters. But he did, and they agreed, and said this man really was morally perfect. And then, you know, the Gideons don't let you off the hook. They got a place where you can kind of sign your name and uh, date it. And basically, it makes that offer. Do you want to trade your moral imperfection for the perfection that Christ offers based on his death on the cross? And are you willing to uh, put Christ in charge of your life? And they made a little statement there that really caught my attention. Jesus is the perfect one. Jesus is the one that knows everything. And as such, he knows better than I do how to run my life the best possible way. So it seemed to me it only made sense to put him in charge. And then finally, the Gideons make this little statement reminding you of verses in Ephesians and elsewhere that when you make that commitment, God sends his Holy Spirit to step by step give you new power and new desire to live the Christian life. And so I eagerly signed my name.